Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Check out a free trial of Skillshare Premium by clicking the link in the description below. Hey, what's up, you lot? Path here. Now, did you know that Ohm's law is not V is equal to IR? Or at least that equation doesn't give us the full picture. In this video, I want to talk about what Ohm's law actually says, as well as one of the misunderstandings that can crop up if we just memorize it as V is equal to IR. If you enjoyed this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. Now, before we get into the intricacies of Ohm's law, I wanted to share a little anecdote with you. When I was younger, my maths teacher would often ask our class to state what Pythagoras' theorem was. And without thinking too much, we would often say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, which would irritate him greatly. In one of our class tests, he decided to set us a question where we had to find the length of one of the sides of this triangle. And everybody who remembered Pythagoras' theorem simply as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared got that question wrong. Whereas everybody who remembered that the square of the length of the longest side of the triangle was equal to the sum of the square of the two shorter lengths, as long as it was a right angle triangle, got that question correct. Now what I've just given you is a very long and wordy description of Pythagoras' theorem, but it's the understanding behind it that's important rather than just memorizing an equation. And I think a common misconception exists about Ohm's law as well, largely due to a very similar problem. Now, many of us might be familiar with the idea that the voltage or potential difference across a circuit component is equal to the current through that component multiplied by the resistance of the component. And as we've said already, this is the equation that is often quoted when discussing Ohm's law. The problem is though, that Ohm's law actually states that the potential difference V is directly proportional to the current I. In other words, the larger the potential difference, say across a circuit component, the larger the current through it. Now, when we turn this proportionality relation into an equation, we define the resistance as being the constant of proportionality. And hence, our equation reads V is equal to IR. But the thing that we often forget is that in this equation, R must be constant in order for this to obey Ohm's law. For ohmic circuit components or ohmic conductors, conductors that follow Ohm's law, it doesn't matter what the potential difference across them is, whether it's 5 volts or 500 volts, the resistance of that component is going to be exactly the same. It's a constant. A huge chunk of conductors in real life behave like this. They obey Ohm's law. For example, resistors, which, like the name suggests, have a constant resistance. But what about non-ohmic conductors? Things like diodes, for example. A diode's IV graph might look something like this rather than being a straight line. And from this graph, we can basically see that in this region, for example, a small change in voltage doesn't result in a huge change in current. But in a different region, the same small change in voltage results in a big change in current. This is no longer a linear relationship. V is no longer proportional to I. And R, the resistance, is no longer constant. However, the equation V is equal to IR still applies here. We could still find the resistance of the diode at any point along the graph. Say, for example, at a potential difference of 10 volts, the current through the diode is 2 amps, and hence the resistance is 5 ohms. But maybe at 20 volts, the current is 5 amps, and hence the resistance is 4 ohms. This is the major problem with saying that ohmic conductors are defined by the equation V is equal to IR. Sure, ohmic conductors do follow the equation V is equal to IR, but so do non-ohmic conductors. It's just that for those conductors, R is not constant. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can find a large number of inspiring classes focusing on topics such as productivity and lifestyle, to building a business, to learning creative skills. Many of you may know that one of my hobbies is creating music. Check out my music channel linked below. And I've taken some classes on Skillshare that have taught me some really cool skills. For example, I took a class called Audio Mixing on the Go, Professional Sound Without the Studio by King Arthur, which gave me lots of tips for improving my mixes without lots of fancy equipment. And that's the key here. Skillshare has a large number of classes to choose from and it's all about learning. So there are no adverts and Skillshare costs less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, but the first 1,000 of you to click the first link in the description box below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Please do go check it out, and big thanks to Skillshare once again for sponsoring this video. Now, sticking with our diode, the way that we've used to find the resistance of this diode is just one method of finding its resistance, the ratio between the voltage and the current. 
This is actually defined as static resistance. Static because we only account for the voltage and current at one particular point on our graph. Another way to measure the resistance of a non-ohmic conductor is to find the gradient or slope delta V divided by delta I. Now technically on this graph we've plotted I against V, so the gradient of this graph is delta I divided by delta V, and what we're really looking for is 1 divided by the gradient. But the point still stands, this is a different way to find out the component's resistance. Using the language of calculus, so making this even more technical, what we're really looking for is dV dI. This is a different kind of resistance, it's known as the differential resistance. And it turns out that differential resistance is not necessarily the same thing as static resistance. So when we are asked to find the resistance of a non-ohmic conductor, we should technically state which kind of resistance we have calculated. Incidentally, if we now go back to an ohmic conductor, the graph looks like this now, we could choose to find the static or the differential resistance, but in this case they just happen to be exactly the same. For those of you familiar with calculus, we can see why that's the case by starting with the equation V is equal to IR and trying to calculate dV by dI, taking into account that R is now a constant. When we do this, we find that dV by dI is simply equal to R, and therefore in this particular case, dV by dI, the differential resistance, is equal to V divided by I, the static resistance. Because these two quantities are the same, for an ohmic conductor, we just call them both the resistance. This is exactly why, in high school, you may have been taught that resistance was defined as V divided by I, but when presented with a graph, in order to calculate the resistance, you would have had to find the gradient, or 1 divided by gradient in this particular case, rather than just picking a point on the graph and finding out what V divided by I was. They just wanted to test your skills in terms of being able to calculate the gradient of a straight line, whilst also simultaneously applying your knowledge of Ohm's law. But technically this is incorrect, right? If they tell you that resistance is equal to V over I, then you should really be asked to find V over I, not the gradient. Just because in this case it happens to be the same doesn't mean it's always going to be true, like we've seen for non-ohmic conductors. Anyway, so I think the one takeaway from this video is that Ohm's law is not the same thing as V is equal to IR. Ohm's law is the same thing as V is equal to IR if R is constant. Or a simpler way to remember this is V is proportional to I. And with all of that being said, just a short, almost ranty video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. Hit the bell button if you'd like to be notified when I upload. And please do check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. Thanks as always for your wonderful support and I will see you very soon.